I read the comments. I see what you say. Well, at least some of you. Not very many, a few. Teasing me about elevating. What's wrong with elevating, CJ? Elevation. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, so I want to show you guys how to use a little bit of simple technique to truly elevate your presentation game, your flavor game. You might not expect some of the ingredients. They're just going to be fun. But this is a way to truly impress your guests. If you're throwing a party, you want to have a fun appetizer. This is a really, really cool way to do it. I'm going to show you guys a fig and red onion crostini with a root beer glaze. Are you just putting cookies out on the Blackstone? Yep. Eating up some fig beans? Let me show you how to do that. Now the first two parts, I did say the root beer glaze. We're gonna get to that in just, uh, let's do that first actually. It's very, very simple. It's one ingredient, root beer, mm. root beer. We're essentially making a reduction, but it already has everything in it that I want. Now I've got a large saute pan on my side burner, my Blackstone. We're gonna crank that up to medium high, high heat. We're gonna add all of this root beer and we're gonna reduce it down we're gonna reduce to, I might even add a third at some point. We essentially want it to look like maple syrup, uh, but it is gonna take about 15 minutes or so. We're gonna keep an eye on it. While we're doing that, I've also got a red onion. I'm gonna slice this up really, really thin. We're talking julienne. It doesn't have to be crazy thin, but thin enough for it to start breaking down. I've got my blackstone at medium, medium low, low heat. Actually, let's go low heat. Add a touch of oil in all of those sliced red onions. Now, just a pinch of salt is all you need. We're gonna cook this for a solid 15, 20 minutes. It's gonna take about the same amount of time as our root beer glaze. What we're looking for is to bring out all of those beautiful sugars to see the color really truly get deep and succulent and wonderful. Like it totally changes the flavor of onions. If you don't like onions, you're gonna love these. They're unbelievable. Uh, so we'll be back in like 15 minutes when this is all done. Sounds good. So it's been about 15 minutes. The onions have caramelized absolutely beautiful. They're, they're almost jammy at this point, which is really cool. And check out these bubbles. Now, when you see the bubbles getting really, really big on our root beer, we're gonna turn the heat off. Uh, what that means is it's condensed enough, or it's reduced enough that the sugar is starting to turn into bigger bubbles, which means we're almost to caramel, which we kind of want. We want, to, we want it to be the consistency of like maple syrup. So we're gonna let this sit. And as it cools, it'll start to thicken up. See, it's like, it's still very liquidous. Soon, CJ, it will be more viscous. Is liquidous, is that the correct uh, term? You'll never know. I don't know. But for these onions, I do have one more thing I want to do. One more thing. Uh, so they're pretty much done, but I want to add a bit more sweetness. So I've got some balsamic glaze. I saw someone do this recently. Oh, I think I've seen somebody with the same technique. CJ did this recently, and I thought it was a really great idea when I gave it to him. So I wanted to use oh, it on this episode. So red onions don't have as much sweetness as a Vidalia or a sweet onion. So I want to add some of that sweetness with the balsamic. It also has that little bit of vinegar, a little bit of punch of acidity is really, really nice. All right, now this is done off to the side. Uh, now we did have just a little bit of vinegar. You can totally smell it once it hits the heat. I'm gonna hit that with just a bit of water because we're gonna toast our bread in just a minute. We don't want any of that vinegar making our bread soggy. Beauty, beauty. All right, let these onions hang out over here. Let our sauce cool. Let's get to our bread. Now today I have a little French bread. I'm just gonna rip some off. Uh, you can use any kind of bread that you like, but I do want to keep them small. Imagine if you're having, you know, a fun little party, a get together, and you want to have a hors d'oeuvre, something to pass around. This is really nice. I'm gonna do thin little, slightly biased cuts. Uh, bias just means on an angle. So uh, CJ, instead of going straight across, turn it just a little bit. It gives us just a touch more surface area, and it looks just a little bit, a little bit nicer. And there's those little things you can do. You don't have to teach me, seeing as how I did make a peach crostini with prosciutto not too long ago, but you know, I didn't want to have to it's remind fine. you. It's fine, it's fine. If you're a real Nate and CJ fan out there, you'll know, you'll know. You'll know. All right, this looks pretty good. Let's hit, let's hit our griddle with just a touch of oil. Uh, we don't want a ton. Uh, I don't want this to be a crouton. We just want it to be a little crisp. Let's go with just a touch of oil. And we're gonna toast these guys. Here we go. Woo, it's a little warm, CJ. Almost like it's a hot griddle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna toast these lightly on both sides. Again, we don't want a crouton. We don't want a cracker. Uh, we just want a little bit of crisp, a little bit of crunch to it. All right, that looks good. Now while this first side, oh, that was horrible. CJ, why didn't you tell me you did such a horrible job on that one? This looks good. 
Uh, while that is going, let's get to our cheese. Today I'm using Vermont cheddar. We want to kind of play on sweet and savory with this dish. Uh, obviously we have a lot of sweet going on, especially with that root beer glaze. Ooh, I probably should have had this inside. Mm -hmm. Dangerous business, flirting with this Florida sun. We're good, we're good, we're good. Let's do some thin little slices here. Uh, so we're gonna get a lot of savory flavors here from our cheese that's gonna compete nicely with the sweetness of everything else. Feeling good about this. Just a few slices. Now let's think of this kind of like a, what did you say earlier, you see a fig, a fig newton? A fig newton. Or a figgy pudding. Not to be confused with a cookie because it's a fig newton. The doll for the cookie. Oh, come on. It's not that good, no. real bad. Uh, just a few slices, we don't need a ton. All right, I feel good about that. Uh, now, when we flip, hang on, let me check one real quick. Yeah, can you see that, CJ? Just a nice, light little toast. Once we flip, that's when we're gonna add, come on, should probably use tongs for this, huh? Just man up and do it. We're doing it, we're doing it. Woof, a little warm. So once we get a nice, light little toast, now the surface is nice and hot, which means as the bottom side is toasting, this cheese will just start to melt slightly. So one little slice of cheese over each one. Feel good about that. And then we're gonna go with some of our onions to even help uh, a little bit more. Do I, did I cut, CJ? I cut the exact amount of cheese. The exact amount? Look at that. It's like I planned this thing. Nice. All right, that'll take another 30 seconds or so. Uh, let's grab our spoon. We'll take a little bit of our onion jam. Look at this, bud. Do you see this? Oh yeah. Wow, that's a whole lot of wow. Uh, so let's just go a little bit over the top, just like that. Hey, no, that was a lot over the top. That was a lot of onion jam. That was a lot on that one. I need to, sh I need to share the love. This is one, uh, if you're throwing parties, it's always nice to have something relatively simple. I mean, you could do the sauce and the onions uh, the day before. I do need to steal some of that one. And just have it finished. Then all you have to do is toast your bread uh, and melt your cheese. And you're off to the races with something really, really fun. And, I mean, you might have laughed in the beginning, but that little shortcut of uh, root beer. It's a fantastic sauce. All right, now on to the figs. The really, really fun part. Actually, I feel like these are almost there. Yeah, these are there. These are definitely there. Let's go ahead and bring these as is over to our cutting board. We'll save them off to this side for now. Oh, oh, was three too much? No, it wasn't. Nice. Thank nice you, gamble. appreciate that. These are really fun. I mean, look, look how tiny and cute they are. I mean, honestly, right now, you're kind of winning. You don't really need a whole lot more if you wanted to go quick. But we do have the next step. Can I do four, CJ? Uh, yes, I can. Oh, look at that. And I left myself no room to cut. So that's fun. Uh, cut our burners off. Let's make ourselves a little bit of room here. All right, now this is really fun. Fresh figs are in season. If they are in season, you want to go get them right away. I like to do a cross cut, just like this. Now don't go too thick. We're just gonna do a couple little slices like that. Look how beautiful that is. Now once we have our little disc, let's just cut to the center. So it's half of it through to the center. To the center and to the center. Now what we're gonna do is this just curls. Just curls now. We'll go right over the top. Little twist right over the top. So this is one of those things very, very simple to do. That was not hard, CJ, right? Not difficult. But it looks really, really elegant. It's like those tiny little bits of garnishing tips and techniques just to make things look nicer. Now, if you wanted to, you could add just a little bit of fresh thyme. Uh, just pull some of the leaves off. We can go right over the top if you want. Just a little bit, just for a touch of color and a touch more of that savory, beautiful, herby flavor. And then before we get to our sauce, uh, I do want to plate these up because I want some of the sauce to get on the plate. So find yourself a nice long plate. Uh, if and when you're like out and about, you're at Target or something or Home Goods, and you find these really cool plates, they're so fun to have. I mean, you don't use them all the time, but when the time is right, you get a really beautiful serving platter. It's really elevate your presentation game. It's like we made a lot of these, so we'll maybe do a second platter. There we go. Or maybe CJ, would you eat this? You're down for this, right? Definitely. Yeah, so CJ can share today. All right, that looks phenomenal. Now our sauce. So it's had a chance to cool off. CJ, can you see how the, the 
consistency is completely changed. It's velvet. Yeah, there's this uh, French term, it's called nappe. If you take a spoon and you go backward and it sticks to the spoon, you can even take your finger and do this move. Uh, can you see my spoon, CJ? Yep. You can take your finger and run it right through the middle. If it holds its shape, oh, you're where you need to be. Now this was not complicated. CJ, what, what are the ingredients here? Root beer and love. There were two ingredients. There were. Now I'm gonna take my root beer and love, and we're just gonna go all chefy right over the tops. Let some of it hit that white plate underneath as you go. Try not to be too heavy handed with it. Long separation of lines just really makes things super beautiful. One more little go. And I mean, that's it. So essentially this is toast and onions and cheese. Fresh figs, I mean, this one, is, it's not complicated. It's not that complicated, but it's really, really stunning. I'm telling you, you're gonna definitely impress your guests. Let's take a bite of this thing. They're so cute, so fun. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. The cheese is just slightly melted, but still firm. The sweetness from the onions and the root beer sauce, whoa. The don't, fresh don't fig. the love. And the love. Fresh fig, I mean, this is really, really, I would venture to say elegant. The flavors are very well balanced, very elegant type of elevated appetizer mm. with root beer. Thank you all so much for hanging out. I love doing dishes like this where they're not super difficult. It just takes a little time, a little bit of forethought to imagine what it's gonna be like finished. And most importantly, who you're gonna be serving. If you really wanna impress, take the next little step of effort and, and do something really, really nice and really fun and seasonal. Figs are fantastic. Fantastic figs. Mm. It was funnier in my head. Yeah, not so funny out here. That's so funny. Uh, if you haven't yet, be sure to click the subscribe button down below. Click the bell icon so you get a notification every time we post a video. Check out Todd, Betty, CJ, Destination Delicious. More episodes from Bruce Mitchell. Yeah, boy. So, so good. But this is Cook, Eat, Repeat, where we help you become a better cook one recipe at a time. I'm your host, Chef Nathan Lippy, and I will see you all in the next video. Thank you. Love the puppy.